Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to look at kind of an oddball problem here. Um, and it may be a weakness in the, the reel. So let's see. When, when I got these in, this is from a commercial boat. When I got these in, the first thing I noticed was that all of the line up top on this spool was gathering up top. Now sometimes that's an indication that the uh, there's washers underneath on the axle shaft are missing. And that, that causes it to spool high when the, the spool runs low to wrap high. If it was the opposite, if it was gathering all on the bottom, that would say you had too many adjustment washers and you would need to remove some. But in this case, when I turn the handle, the spool isn't going anywhere. So the line is wrapping where the line guide meets the spool. And if it's coming down, it's only coming down because it's falling that way. Odd enough. Um, so my initial thinking is, okay, we've got a problem now with something that makes the axle shaft go up and down. It's either the oscillation gear or the crosswind block. And, and easy enough, we'll take it apart and we're going to find that out. But then I got a second wheel in. And sure enough, the same thing is happening. The spool's not going up and down. Hmm. I don't know. Two, uh, two makes for fun, but got a third reel in. Spool's not going up and down. Now you're starting to think conspiracy theory here, right? Uh, it must be a weakness in the reel. Because there's three reels that we use relatively uh, heavily, and in each case, something has gone wrong. So it's either a bad oscillation gear, or it's a bad crosswind block, or it's something else. And that's what we'll just do a quick look at here as a way to all of us learn is the Offshore Series, which is a relatively strong reel from Finwar, is that a weakness in this? And I'm, I'm always curious what's causing it. So we're going to take the pieces and parts off. We're going to take an examination of it. That's the purpose of this video. We'll see if it's an underlying weakness of the reel or if, in fact, all three have something different going on in them. But for now, we're going to concentrate on this one. And to take the, uh, the reel off, you can remove the handle first, and this is a commercial application, so even you can see that the, the reel has had a good amount of use. If you look at the handle here, the rubber is already broken off the side. So this one has had several uh, trips, to say the least, and uh, it's taken, taken quite a beating. Now this charter boat that uses these reels fishes for fighting fish, like bluefish in the northeast here. And they also don't do any preventive maintenance, so they kind of fish them until they break, and then they find me, and I go ahead and put them back together as best I can. So in this case, I'm curious, do I have to order one part, or do I have to order several parts, and uh, are they all the same parts that broke? So as I'm taking these uh, external pieces off, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel everybody who's involved in the medical fields, whether they're on the front lines in the ERs or if they're in administration in hospitals or if they're working in local doctor's office, nurses' homes, or long-term care facilities. I really do appreciate everything it is that you're doing to keep all of us safe and to restore those that have contacted the, uh, the diseases, uh, restore them back to health. Thank you for all it is that you do. I've loosened the four screws here. And one of the things you want to look for as you remove the side plates is, does the side plate stop at the bottom of the rotor, or does it continue up and under the, uh, the spool if, uh, or the rotor? If, uh, if it does, then you're going to have to come from the top down and remove the axle shaft and the rotor, or the, the click ratchet on the axle shaft, the rotor, and then you'll be able to get that lip under there. But in this case, this one is stopping here, which means that you can access the gear side without removing the rotor first. So I just pulled the screws. Looks like I've got one more that's still a little bit set. Get those screws out. You want to pay attention when you're doing this. I just noticed that one of the screws is short, the one up top here, and one is long. So. I want to take the other two out so that I can verify where they belong as well. Sometimes, well, <laughs> now we got three that are different. Let's see if the fourth one is different as well. So you got to make mental notes of this as you go through. 
So we have two that are the same. Those two are the bottom screws. We have a long screw up top on the right hand side and we have a short screw up top on the left hand side. So you need to make sure that you know that and you note it as you uh, take your wheel apart. Otherwise you're going to find that you're going to have uh, screws that are not going to fit. Imagine trying to put the long screw into the short hole here. It just wouldn't fit, right? Uh, or the short screw here into there. You'd never grab a thread. So take notes. Take pictures along the way. If, uh, I'm taking pictures with the video, but if you're not familiar with the reel and you're jumping into the thing, take some pictures. It'll give you your reference points, and those reference points will help you in the reassembly of the reel. Okay, let's take the side plate off. Now we got to take the crosswind block off. Looks like there's two different screws on the crosswind block. There's a, a uh, flat piece that's holding that uh, axle shaft in place. You got to remove the axle shaft first. And then you can remove the other pieces. Here's another case. There's a, a large headed screw on the one side and there's a short or smaller head screw on the other side. Interestingly enough, they're about the same size, so you got to make a note. Big head belongs over here, shorter one over there. Now we should be able to remove the spool shaft assembly. Now we can remove the main gear. And now we're to the point to figure out what's going on here. So I'm going to pull this crosswind block. And this crosswind block may or may not be broken. So let's look at the back of this. Well, there's your problem. So there's a gear that belongs on here that we don't have. We have a broken main gear assembly. So normally there would be a gear that comes on to here. And we can see there's a flat side here that would hold that main that gear. When that comes in, that gear is going to drive the oscillation gear. But it's missing. That's highly unusual. I don't know why. I don't know if somebody's had this apart. Because that makes zero sense that we would be missing the back end of this, uh, this gear. So we're going to open up another one. We're going to see if that's the same case there. But that's really unusual. It may be that somebody, uh, somebody's been in there. All right, let's take another one then. Let's see if that's the case. If that's the case, then we're going to go back out at this uh, this boat here. I'm going to ask them what in the world's going on. And you can see the heavy usage on this reels. In this case, we're missing that little um, side plate cover. I'm missing it on. Here it is. We're missing that side plate cover. Okay, I'm just going to leave these on the table so that they're. They're separated from the other reel. But that's really odd. And what's really odd is I'm the only one who works on these reels for the boat, so somebody may have found that it failed, took it apart, dropped that uh, sprocket out, and uh, just kind of left it for me. That's possible, just kind of button the reel back up. You're never quite sure. I get some reels in the shop where the folks will be happy to tell me, hey, I took a, took a swing at this one and I missed. And uh, now I need you to come in and kind of straighten it out. I don't mind that, but I do kind of mind when I get these in and uh, somebody doesn't own up to it. And then I'm spending a lot of time doing some diagnosis here that uh, may or may not be relevant because if somebody simply told me that the crosswind uh, gear on the back of the main gear was broken, well, life would be a whole lot easier, right? Okay, that's the only one there. Let's see if we can get this off. Yeah, so this one has the gear in it. We can see the gear in the back here. So I'm still trying to figure out on this why and how and what's missing. There's something missing in here. We have the gear but it's pushed off the track of this. So let's just go under here. This is why I say you need to take a reel apart to do your diagnostics. You can't just say, okay, I, I know this one. It's a broken crosswind gear. And just go ahead and order crosswind gears. 
and then you open it up and it's not the cross wind gear and it's not the cross wind block it's uh, something else going on inside the reel so I haven't pulled the schematics that's going to be my next step I just wanted to verify that uh, there was something going on here I'm trying to figure out what it is yeah that's uh, this one's fine the block you may or may not have that I'm going to pull this out So this is a nicely made reel. You can see the gearing is very strong ge gearing. But something is going on here that uh, has caused three reels to fail now. And I can't even imagine how the other gear became displaced. So the mystery continues. Bearing at. So this is the gear I'm referring to. Now you can get a visual of what's going on. So if you take the the gear and you set it on to there, there's two flat spots. That's as far as it's going to go. And then you take a look at the bearing. And the bearing goes flush. So that bearing is going to hold that crosswind gear in to uh, to make it work. You're going to have your crosswind gear in there. I'm going to use the, I'm going to hold that upside down here. We're going to put that crosswind gear in. I'm going to mesh it. Then we can come in from the other side with the main gear. We have that gear in there now. Let's put this crosswind gear back in over the stud. possible that that bearing came out. Yeah, there we go. Now we're driving the driving that crosswind gear again. You can see it. So I'm thinking what may have happened here is that the this piece came off the side plate, the bearing came out, that gear dropped out and a mate probably just put the bearing back in in the uh, in the other case. And this one, I think it probably just became distorted enough that it wasn't grabbing that crosswind gear. Okay, so it looks like we've identified the problem. It looks like when these bearings come out, the gear behind them comes out. The bearings come out because that, that sidewall cap gets lost. The bearing comes out, the gear falls out. I guess a mate may have grabbed the bearing and put that back in, but lost the, the side plate cap. And uh, then you wind up where your gear isn't there, so it can't drive the crosswind gear and can't make the spool go up and down. Okay, so we looked at the one, and it looks like there's a gear missing. And now you start to ask yourselves, well, what's going on here? Well, he, and the gear is missing as well, and so is the, the cap that holds the gear and the bearing in. And you ask yourself, well, how did that happen? Was it the boat that was shaking or what? Well, I think I have the answer. So this is a rental reel that uh, belongs to a charter boat and it's got a different customer every trip. And sometimes the customers like to uh, fish the spinning reel cranking with their right hand and sometimes they, they like to do that with their left hand. And if you, if you want to crank with your right hand and you have the handle on the left hand side, a lot of these customers will take it upon themselves to switch it over, right? Simple enough task, just take it from the one side, move it to the other. Well, in theory, it's a simple enough task. I can see what's happening here already. Somebody, right, decided they were going to move it to the right-hand side. They, they took the cap off because, well, it makes sense to take the cap off. No, it doesn't. You don't need to remove this cap. But take the cap off. Pull the handle out of this side, pop the bearing and the gear on that side. Well, then you don't have a drive gear for this. If they're smart enough, they probably just put a bearing back in. I think that's what's happened with this one. Somebody put the bearing back in when it came off in the hand, wrapped the collar on it, perhaps. And if they put the collar back on it, well, the reel doesn't work. They call a mate and say, mate, the reel isn't working. And he swaps it out and doesn't realize 
that when the customer took that handle off, uh, took the cap off, he lost the main gear that drives the crosswind block. It's, if it happened once, you would say that's a curiosity. If it happens twice, you say, hmm, I think I got a trend. If it happens three times, you start to say, what's the cause? And I believe truly the cause is, is that the rental customers trying to switch the handles from one side to the other. Uh, when they opened up this side, took that nut off, the, the gear probably went overboard or hit the deck and went rolling somewhere. They probably didn't even realize that that gear is in this side. And uh, as soon as it breaks, well, hey mate, uh, this one's not working. You need to get me another one kind of a deal. And uh, this one goes into the pile for, uh, for me to fix, right? So I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened because we have other reels out there from the same. Here's an example, almost a brand new pen bottle, no handle. Well, why is that? Because somebody wanted to move it from the left side to the right and somehow managed to drop the handle overboard in the process. So I'm going to say that's the cause. I'm going to open up the other reels. I'm going to make sure that either the, the gear is there or it's not there. I'm going to have to go back and order gear. Maybe I'll have to order a bearing in this case, side plate uh, cap and then put them back together again and, and get these out there fishing. So there comes a point in a reel that you say, is it really worth the, uh, the cost to go do this? This is probably, I'm, I'm going to guess, a $120 reel, maybe, somewhere in that area. It's a nice sturdy reel, and it'll stand the rigors of a commercial boat. It won't stand the, uh, the rigors of a customer who uh, isn't quite certain what they're doing, but uh, it will stand up. So I'm going to have to price this out to make a decision, or have the captain make a decision as to whether he wants me to pursue it. I'm going to guess the bearing is probably about $13, $14. That internal cog that drives the crosswind block may be another $13, $14. The cap may be another $3 or $4. We're up to $25 in parts, and that's without a service fee. Uh, so we're going to have to see. We have to see if this one makes sense. So all three of them make sense to repair. And uh, if it does, we'll go ahead and we'll do that repair. If not, I guess we'll put these onto the uh, uh, in the bucket and say save these for uh, when another one of these breaks that doesn't have the same cause. Maybe it loses a main gear. Maybe it loses a bearing. Maybe the spool gets out of round. Maybe the bail bends or something. You can use those parts for repair parts. We'll have to see. So always looking to learn. That's why we did this video. Why reels fail. And in this case, we found out that they probably failed due to human intervention in trying to uh, swap parts. That, at least that's my best guess. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you do and you like these kinds of videos, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please hit the notification button. That way you'll see when I post these videos. And uh, if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, if you uh, leave that question with me, I'll try and get an answer for you. And finally, if you uh, have a reel that needs to be repaired, well, I do those too, and I do them uh, through the mail. So uh, contact me by the information email on the business card that follows. I'll be happy to provide you uh, with real repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.